Happy Friday, scholars. I'm excited to be with you today. Today, we're going to be reading the book called Ruby's Wish. To get our heart and brain ready for this book, we're going to talk about four things. The first thing is, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to think about your answer. And if you have a chance to share your answer with someone sitting next to you. The question is, what is something that you wished for? And what did you do to make it happen? For me, I recently wished to grow my family and to get a puppy. I made it happen by first checking with my family to make sure it was the just right choice, then reading lots of books about puppies, and then making a plan with my family about how we're going to take care of it. So thinking about your answer to this question is really going to help you better understand the character in this story. The second thing we're going to talk about is the genre of this book. The genre is nonfiction, means that we're going to be learning new and true facts from this book. And because this character is a real person, we're going to be learning about their real life and their story. This makes this book a biography. The third thing we're going to be talking about is this character, Ruby, Ruby's identity. And through research, we know that Ruby's gender identity is a girl or woman. We know that Ruby's age identity in this book starts off as a child and then becomes an adult. We know that Ruby's race is Asian. Her ancestors are from China, which makes her ethnicity Chinese. And her language identity is Chinese. The last thing we're going to be talking about is an important word that's going to help you better understand this story. The word is calligraphy. Say it with me. Calligraphy. Let's clap out the syllables in this word. Calligraphy. Pump it up. Calligraphy. Let's inspire a minute. Calligraphy. We're just going to end by counting on your fingers. Calligraphy. Four syllables in the word calligraphy. Calligraphy means the art of writing. And because we know through research that Ruby's language identity is Chinese, the writing in this book that you're going to see that she does is Chinese characters. So now that our heart and brain is ready for this book, let's begin. Ruby's Wish. This book is written by Sherry Niem Bridges, who is the granddaughter of Ruby, the person we're learning about in this story. And this book was illustrated by Sophie Blackwell. Ruby's Wish. I noticed the brush that you used to do calligraphy with. Ruby's Wish. I'm wondering if one of these characters is Ruby. If you walk down a certain road in a certain city in China, past a pet market, you will come to a block of houses, five houses wide and seven houses deep. Many families live here now. But once upon a time, this was all one house, the home of one family. The house was built by an old man who returned from the Gold Mountain. That was what the Chinese called California. When many men left to join the Gold Rush there, few came back. So the gold rush is where people went in California to find gold. But as I said, this man did come back and he came back very rich. It sounds like we're learning about the class identity of this man, that he had more access to money. And he had a big family. And at one time, he had over 100 children living in his house. Among these children was a little girl that everyone called Ruby because she loved the color red. In China, red is the color of celebration. On New Year's Day, children receive red envelopes full of good luck money. Brides were red on their wedding days, but Ruby insisted on wearing red every day. Even when her mother made her wear somber colors or not as bright colors, like all her other cousins, Ruby would tie up her jet black hair with red ribbons. Because he had so many grandchildren, Ruby's grandfather hired a teacher to come to the house. Any grandchild who wanted to learn could go to school and join the classes. This was unusual in China in those days, when most girls were never taught to read or write. So it sounds like at this time, there was an untrue story being told that boys are better than girls and that because they were more important, they, and because they were more important, they should learn how to read or write instead of girls. But it sounds like because of this grandfather's class identity, all of his grandchildren or all of his children that lived in, in his house were able to go to school, including Ruby. 
One day, Ruby's grandfather looked down from his window to see a high white wall of the garden plastered with calligraphy. His grandchildren had been practicing their handwriting. Ruby's grandfather laughed to see that so many had smudged ink on their hands and their faces. And then he noticed a sheet that was more beautiful than the rest. Which of his grandchildren had produced such wonderful calligraphy? And down in the garden, the teacher was praising or giving kind words to Ruby. Her ears were turning bright red, the color of her jacket. Because her ears were turning bright red, and I can see that Alicia is showing me that she's looking down, I'm wondering if she's feeling a little embarrassed about her work and getting attention from that. But if Ruby was doing as well as the boys in her family, she had to work much harder. When the boys had finished their studies or worked from school for the day, they were free to go play. But the girls had to learn how to cook and how to take care of the house, like learn how to sew and do embroidery. In fact, as far as their mothers were concerned, these were the only things girls had to learn. So it sounds like an untrue story is being told that when girls grow up, their only job was to take care of the home. One by one, the girls stopped going to school and going to their classes, all except Ruby. She would catch up on her embroidery or sewing at night. And many nights, her candle flickered long after everyone else had gone to bed. It sounds like going to school and learning how to read and write was really important to Ruby because she didn't stop going to school. And also, she stayed up late at night to get all of her work done so she could go to school, even when everyone else was sleeping. And one day, the children were asked to write a poem. So Ruby wrote, and these were her words, at last, bad luck to be born a girl and worse luck to be born into this house where only boys were cared for. Ruby's teacher was impressed by her poem and he showed it to Ruby's grandfather and Ruby's grandfather was also impressed, but he was a little bit worried about what the poem said. So he summoned or called Ruby to his office. Ruby found her grandfather sitting in his chair, her poem spread open on his desk. Her grandfather asked, did you write this poem? Yes, I did, grandfather. Do you really think that in this house, we only care for boys? Oh, oh no, said Ruby in a very, very sorry that she upset him. You take good care of us and for that we're all grateful, said Ruby. Her grandfather said gently, little Ruby, I really like, I would really like to know why you wrote this poem. How are the boys better looked after? It sounds like Ruby wrote this poem and named the untrue story that boys were better than girls and they're being taken care of or treated better than girls. And it sounds like when the grandfather's asking Ruby questions about why she wrote this poem, that he didn't notice that there was an untrue story being told. Well, said Ruby, trying to think of a small, unimportant example to share with her grandfather. She said, when it was the moon festival and we were each given half a moon cake, the boys always get the half with the yellow moon yolk. And that's the best part. Hmm, said grandfather, as if you're still waiting. Is that so? He asked. Yes, Ruby said. And then she gave another example. When it was the lantern festival, the girls were giving simple paper lanterns, but the boys were giving red lanterns in the shape of goldfish, cockerels, and dragons. Ruby's grandfather chuckled and he laughed quietly. He never thought about it before. He could imagine how Ruby might have liked a red lantern like all the boys got. But most importantly, said Ruby, staring hard at her shoes. I wonder if this is hard for her to tell her grandfather. The boys would get to go to university or college, but the girls would be married, Ruby said. Do you want to be married? Don't you want to be married? Asked her grandfather. You know, you are very lucky, said grandfather. A daughter of this house can marry any man. I know, said grandfather. I know, said Ruby, but I'd much rather go to university. I'd much rather go to college, said Ruby. 
Ruby's grandfather touched her hair. Thank you for talking to me, Ruby. Go on with your lessons and make most of them while you can. So it sounds like grandfather was really appreciating Ruby naming that untrue story. So Ruby continued with her lessons at school. And on New Year's Day, Ruby put on her red velvet shoes and tied red ribbons in her hair. Then she went to wish everyone a happy new year. She started with her merry cousins and then worked her way up through her parents, aunts, and uncles. Each one gave her a red packet full of money. And then finally, she bowed before her grandfather. Good luck and prosperity, grandfather, she said. Good luck, little Ruby, replied her grandfather. And he handed her a very fat red packet. Ruby could feel all of the eyes on her as she opened the red envelope. Can you guess what was in it? It wasn't money. It was something much better than that. I wonder what was inside her red envelope. It was a letter from a university or college saying that they would be proud to accept Ruby as one of their very first female students. So that's how Ruby got her wish. It's a true story. And how do I know this, said the author? Well, Ruby is my grandmother. And every day, she still wears a little red. So it sounds like in that red envelope that her grandfather gave her was a letter from a college saying that she could go there and that she was accepted. And it sounds like she was one of the first students who identified as a woman. And the illustrator showing us here a photograph of Ruby looks like. The end. The good reader question is, what was Ruby's wish and how do you know? We know that good readers use evidence from the book to support their idea. So it may sound like, I think that Ruby's wish is because the author told me, or I think that Ruby's wish is because the illustrator showed me. So think about it for a second to your answer to the question, what was Ruby's wish and how do you know? When you get a chance, share your idea with someone sitting next to you. Great. For me, my answer is, I think that Ruby's wish is that she really wanted to learn and to go to school. And I, th I think that because the author told me here when she was little that one by one, the girls stopped going to classes, all except Ruby. So the author is telling me here that even though other girls in her family stopped going to school, she continued to go to school even when people were telling her that it wasn't important because she was a girl. And also the illustrator showing me here that it was at night when people were sleeping, but she was still working hard. I'm excited to know what your answer is. So we know that good readers, after they're done reading a book, they retell or summarize the book back to them. So we're gonna do a retell together. I have an idea web here to get all of our ideas down on paper. It has a topic we put in the middle and then all the details that support the topic on the sides. So our topic for Ruby's wish is Ruby because that's the person that we studied today. I'm gonna copy her name, R-U-B-Y. On the outsides, we write the details that support this topic. So I'm going to be thinking about new and true facts that I learned about Ruby. So if I'm thinking back into the book, I remember that she was one of the first female students to get accepted to a university. So I'm going to write that detail or that new and true fact here. My sentence is going to say, Ruby went to a university. My first word is Ruby. I'm copying that word for my topic. Ruby went. I'm going to stretch that out. W -e -t went. Ruby went to, to basketball, let's dribble it out, T-O. Ruby went to a, Ruby went to a university. I know university is a long word, so I'm gonna do my best to say this word slowly so I can really hear the sounds in the word and write a letter for each sound that I hear. U-N-I-V-E-R-S-I-T-E, university. I'm gonna end with a period and saying with a green voice. Ruby went to a university. So now it's your turn, scholars. You are going to write about the topic of this book, 
from Ruby's wishes and all of the details and nonfiction and new and true facts that you learned about this topic. We can't wait to read what you wrote. Have a great day, scholars.